So, okay, we've talked about the pros and the cons of traditional employment. Let's talk a little bit about entrepreneurship now. And so we thought it was interesting do it, in doing some research, we wanted to understand, okay, why do people become entrepreneurs? What are the reasons why they pursue it? And this is really interesting. This is data from Guidant Financial. They found 60% of folks said they did it because they want to be their own boss. 47% of respondents said that they are dissatisfied with their current jobs. They want to be in entrepreneurship so they can do something different. 31% say their passion drives them to entrepreneurship. 23% said they do it because they're unemployed. A uh, catastrophic life event <laughs> caused them, can't get a job or don't have a job, I'm going to go do this. 23% said uh, they are not yet ready to retire, so this is Act 2.0 for them. And then 21% said they do it because they saw an opportunity. There was an opportunity for me to pursue entrepreneurship, and that is what I fell into. Now, none of these are inherently good or inherently bad. But I think it's interesting, Brian, I certainly know that in your experience you would agree with this. Maybe some of these don't uh, create the staying power necessary because we've already shown that it's it's like climbing a cliff. It's not the easiest thing in the world to step out and be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I, I love that. We're going to close the show, so make sure you stick around. We're going to tell you how to do this the right way if you do want to be an entrepreneur. But I think if you're just doing it to get out of your current job that you dislike, mm -hmm you may find that it's a lot harder than you realize. And if you're just doing it because you're just passionate about doing something mm -hmm. and you haven't done the, the the research and the data to know, hey, is this even viable to make a living doing this for, you know, to pay the bills and grow a family and do all the things, you might be sorely disappointed. So it is making sure you have to begin with the end in mind and have a good plan that intersects the passion, the opportunities, and all the other things that come with it. I love it. So, okay, let's talk about some of the unique benefits as it relates to entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Now, the first one, and this seems kind of common sense, but it makes sense, is you're probably going into a field that you enjoy. If you're choosing to start a business where you get to call the shots and you get to choose what you sell or what service you provide, you're probably going to pick something that you like. You're probably going to pick something that you have some sort of affinity for. Very few entrepreneur, entrepreneurs start a business that they hate right out of the gate. That's just not the reason why you would go into that. So you get to choose something, hey, I want to provide this service or provide this good to the world, and it's something I care about. I would argue that's a benefit that maybe if you just have a J-O-B that you clock in and out of, you don't have that same sort of same sort of mindset. Yeah, that's definitely a benefit. I, I think this one, this is kind of what I thought is that if you're an entrepreneur, you'll, you'll get to have more freedom. Mm. Now, look, this is true. Because remember, I told you I wanted to go to the schools, the kids' plays, or you know when they sing at Christmas time. I want to be able to leave the office. I want to make sure I didn't miss any of the life sweet elements. Um, that is true. I do have more freedom for that. But if I was doing it just for the sake of working less. Mm. I don't think it's as true. I don't think because, you worked less, actually. Yeah, I mean, like I was working, I worked both a little bit. Not not a bad way, because it is back to that point, number one. I love what I do for mm -hmm. a living. So things, I get, you know, things that come on the brain while I'm asleep or I think about and I write it down and then I'll work on a Saturday, I'll work on a Sunday, and it doesn't feel like I'm working, mm -hmm. but I, it is not less hours like I originally thought it was going You're to be. You have more control of your time. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have more time, right? Yep. Uh, what about this? Uh, one of the other benefits of entrepreneurship is that uh, theoretically your earning potential could be higher. You, you might be able to make more as an entrepreneur than as a traditional employee, and you can likely control the way that you're paid and when that pay comes. But again, that's not a given, and we're going to talk more about that in a moment. But potentially, you could earn more. The pot of money at the end of the rainbow could be bigger for entrepreneurs than traditional employees. No, it definitely is. There's something there in the fact that you don't – it's not that it happens – easier. Mm -hmm. It's just that I don't think that there's a ceiling on it like there is when you're an employee. Right. There's nobody that's going to put a restrictor because they're worried about, are we paying him more than they're paying them? Mm -hmm. and, and all this other comparison. It's just what value are you bringing to the marketplace? And, and is, if you can keep scaling that and keep adding, it keeps going up. And then listen to this. The data suggests that entrepreneurs in general, are happier than employees. Now, I'm going to read some statistics to you, but Brian, you had an interesting point in this. It said 76% of small business owners say they are happy, while 24% say they feel neutral or unhappy. So a lot of business owners say they're happy. 
Uh, 46% of employees, those who work for someone else, say they're happy and feel valued at work. So, so less, less than, than half. half. Yep. Uh, 92% of small business owners don't regret starting their business. So that sounds like a ringing endorsement. Almost 100% of business owners today said they don't regret it. But you threw some cold water on that. Yeah, I, I do think, I mean, look... It, this is we asked people who made it on the other side of a very they climbed the, the the top of the mountain and they're there. And I, I told you the analogy. I think this is like cold plunging. Mm-hmm. You know, when I hear people tell me how awesome cold plunging is, I'm always like, well, yeah, you shocked your body, you jumped into a body of cold water, you came out, you got all these endorphins and everything, you know, all the you. things that you know <laughs> your body thought it was going to die in the moment. You tricked it, and then you got all this adrenaline and everything, so you survived it. So of course course, you're like super happy. Well, the same thing with entrepreneurship. It has a high washout or failure rate. Mm-hmm. So if you're interviewing people who have been entrepreneurs for a period of time that gets beyond the washout or failure rate, yes, you're going to have people that are very happy. I think about one of my best friends from childhood who was growing up. His dad got laid off as a welder, um, wasn't making a ton of money, couldn't find another job. So then he started. <laughs> he was on the twenty one percent that were he started, you know, unemployed. But then he started, you know, doing some metal fabrication, and then he caught traction. This thing grew. And when I was a young person in high school, that I would go work extra hours, which cracks me up that I think back now to my parents saying, yeah, go work at Mr. Harry's shop. Or metal these fabrication. huge <laughs> stamps, I mean, where we're pushing. I mean, I could have lost a limb very easily the way we were doing because, you know, when you're doing drills and and – cutting metal, you know, you, you're, they want you to be paid for speed. And, and and here I am, a high school kid, not thinking about the risk of what we're doing whatsoever. But when you'd ask, I remember asking my friend's father about his entrepreneurial journey because he started having the fruits of it, buying multiple Harleys and all sure. these other things. You could tell he was successful. His eyes would kind of glaze over in a very happy way because he had gone the road less traveled mm-hmm. and it had all worked out. So I, I think the data is right. But I do think you always have to worry about survivorship mm-hmm. bias in data points because you you have people who actually suver- survived the, the hard journey of the road less traveled. So, of course, the data is going to skew towards I, them. 